Well, here we are again. Today I'm coming to you from the surface of the moon. Surface of the moon. Thought I'd do my hair for today too. Make it look a little different than it normally does. Uh, you know, and this hat I got right here, this actually is from 9-11. Uh, you know, uh, the last time our country really came together uh, due to an unfortunate event. So I thought I'd represent this hat today too. So we are back for science stream number, I think this is number eight. I think we've been doing this now for eight times. That's pretty awesome. All right. So again, looks like we have quite a few people in here. Apparently, I'm re realizing from your uh, comments that the ends of my streams are getting cut off. And uh, I don't know why. I don't know why. Trying to fix it. Trying to deal with it. Trying to figure things out. You know how it goes. I am now a girl trucker. That looks, that's wonderful. Awesome. Thank you for that, Taj. Yeah. It's, who said it's a wig? Who said it's a wig? I don't think it's a wig. All right, well, today on our little science stream, we have a number of things to get to, uh, a number of things that people asked me about yesterday, and it might not be a very long stream today, but, uh, you know, I'll get to the questions you asked yesterday, and if you think of more today, let me know. All right. Who got a new username? Oh, Colin got a new username. Oh, I see which one it is. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right, so let's get to the first question of the day and that is is water wet now I said yesterday I've been asked this question so many times and uh, you know I always said water was wet it's water I mean come on but you know what? I did a little bit of research and I went out and I found out the answer to your question all right is water wet let's see if we can get an answer to that question today let me get rid of uh, my, my face here on your screen, I'll make it smaller like I've been doing and just get over here, move myself to the corner again and all right, here we go. So is water wet? Very interesting question. Well, the answer to the question depends on the actual question itself. If you're asking if water makes things wet, then obviously the answer is yes. If you're asking is water wet itself? Well, to my surprise, the answer is not really, all right? And here's why. Water makes things wet. Water itself is not wet. There's two things that go on when it comes to wondering if water is wet. One has to deal with the word adhesion. The other one has to deal with the word cohesion, all right? Those are the two processes that are going to answer this question. Cohesion is when water molecules, because of hydrogen in those water molecules, bind up together. It keeps water droplets together. Okay. So if you're going to use, um, you know, if you ever just seen a droplet of water on a table, cohesion is what's going to keep that water from spreading out on the table. It keeps it in a single drop. It's also called surface tension. If you ever fill up a glass of water to the top and just a little bit over the top, you can see it kind of mushrooms over the top without spilling out just a little tiny bit. That right there is because of cohesion. Those water molecules are sticking together. Now, the word adhesion means that the water droplets themselves stick to a solid surface. Okay, adhesion, tape is adhesive. All right, so when the water molecules adhere or stick to that solid surface, now that solid surface is now wet. The water itself is not wet, but because of the adhesion of those water molecules to that material, that material is now wet. Okay, and the more that the water spreads out, onto the material, the wetter it's going to be. So uh, liquids like um, isopropyl rubbing alcohol or um, any liquid that's not as viscous, meaning it's really thin, those are very much more adhesive than cohesive. So they adhere to materials and they will spread out over those materials and make them wet. Water, on the other hand, is rather cohesive because water will beat up into droplets of itself. That's called cohesion. Okay, so again, water is not necessarily wet itself, but it makes things wet by adhering to those subjects. In order to make something wet, you have to have a solid. Liquids cannot make other liquids wet. Does that make sense? I don't know. Interesting. Interesting thing to think about. And I think that was uh, Sophia Fields yesterday who asked me that question about water being wet. So very nice. Very nice question. How do bones work? Is that what I hear? I'm gonna, like I said, I always go through all these and I will go back and take the questions. I write them down. All right. And I try to get to them the next day. Now, the next question 
that somebody asked. Actually, I don't think it was Sophia who asked, is water wet? She, a bunch of people asked that question. I know Sophia asked me this one. If everyone in the world jumped at the exact same time, if everyone in the world jumped at the exact same time, what would happen? What would happen? All right. Well, the answer to that question is nothing. We wouldn't even really notice a difference. Nothing would really happen. Okay. And let me explain why nothing would really happen. Let me pull up here a picture of the earth. I can't type today, apparently. All right. If I just grab a picture of the earth here, I'm going to use my mouse here to try to show you what would happen if everybody on the earth jumped at the same time. Now, you got to remember, and we talked about this during our science class time, people stand on the world and they're standing and not falling down because of gravity. Okay. Now, if we go and take a look at the earth here, gravity is going to pull everything not down. We know that gravity doesn't pull things down. Gravity pulls things to the center of the earth. All right. So if a person standing here in North America, they're being pulled to the center of the earth. If a person standing here in South America, they're being pulled to the center of the earth. If somebody's standing over here while they're standing out this way, they're being pulled to the center of the earth. So everybody's feet are on the ground or on the surface of the earth. Now imagine this, if everybody jumped up in the air at the exact same time, and they all came down at the same time, it would be like taking your hands and wrapping it around a balloon, all the way around a balloon. If you could push on that balloon with all the same pressure at the same time, that balloon's not really gonna go anywhere, all right? Because all that force is coming together at the same time. Plus people are small compared to the earth. But anyway, if you have enough people, seven, you know, about 7.2 billion people jumping at the same time, all that force is gonna cancel each other out. We got some people pushing this way, some people pushing this way, some going this way, some going that way. They're going to cancel each other out. So to answer the question, what would happen if everybody on the earth jumped at the same time? The answer is not much. Okay. Now, if you could get everybody on the earth to stand in one continent and jump at the same time, that might be a different story. Okay. But because people are spread out around the entire earth and all over the place, when they jump, not much would happen. All right. Good question. Good question. Let me see what's going on here. Check the stream again. I think that is neither wet nor. Uh, I think Taj has been looking up some of the same sites that I have to get some of my information, which is good. You guys are researching your own questions. That's awesome. Just make sure you get your research from a reliable source. All right. Make sure you check where it's coming from so you know if the stuff you're reading about is actually true. Now, somebody asked me this question yesterday also, and that question was Is there really somebody else on the earth who looks just like me? Is there really somebody else on the earth who really looks just like me? Well, again, excellent question. All right, really, really good question. This one's kind of tricky too. Like, is the water wet kind of question? Because the answer is maybe. Maybe. The chances are going to be extremely small, though. There's somebody who looks exactly like you. A few years ago, there were some researchers in Australia who divided your facial features up into eight different characteristics, okay? And then they put all those characteristics into an algorithm, which is a fancy math equation. They ran it through a computer, and they found out that the chances of somebody on Earth looking exactly like you or like me, one in a trillion. The chances of somebody looking exactly like you or somebody like you or somebody in your family it's called a doppelganger, if you didn't know that. You ever hear that word before, doppelganger? Well, the chances of you having an exact doppelganger based on those eight facial characteristics is about one in a trillion. Now, think about that. We only have about 7.2 billion people on Earth, all right? So while the chance is very, 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 very small, I guess you could say, yeah, there is a chance that somebody on Earth looks like you. There is another doppelganger of you out there, maybe with a really, really, really small chance. All right. Those are my three questions for today. Those are my three questions for, for, for today. So I'm going to look here through the chat to see if anybody has anything else coming my way right now that I can answer right now. How much pollution would be created if every volcano were to erupt? You know what, Colin? I believe that's you. I'm going to answer that question right now because here's the crazy thing about volcanoes. And instead of looking up, um, you know, random pictures on my screen. I'll put a volcano picture up here just so you know what I'm talking about. Here's the thing about volcanic eruptions. It's a really good question, Colin. We would have major, major issues if every volcano on earth erupted at the same time. 
Okay, if every volcano erupted at the same time, we would, and this is the ironic thing, this is the ironic part about volcanoes. If every volcano on Earth erupted at the same time, or even if enough volcanoes erupted on Earth at the same time, not even all of them, we could actually be plunged into an ice age. Hmm? Wait a minute. I thought you said the other day that lava comes out of volcanoes. It's hot, right? Well, if we have enough volcanic eruptions at the, at, at going on on Earth, we could actually be plunged into an ice age. And here's what can happen. When volcanoes erupt, out comes the lava, right? It shoots up in the sky. It's got a couple names for that. We'll get to that later. But one of the gases that comes out of a volcano is sulfur. Now, sulfur, and uh, I have some in my room. I don't know if I ever brought it around to let anybody smell what sulfur smells like. I think I did earlier in the year. It's a yellow mineral. But anyway, sulfur, when it enters our atmosphere in its gas form, it can actually combine with water vapor. And when it combines with water vapor, it forms sulfuric acid. All right. Now, you've probably heard of sulfuric acid before. Well, that sulfuric acid, first of all, it can come down as acid rain. Acid rain is very common around volcanic eruptions. But if enough of that sulfuric acid is in the sky, in our atmosphere at the same time, it's not just going to stay right over top of the volcano where it erupted. We know that the wind blows. It's going to blow around the earth. Well, sulfuric acid molecules are extremely shiny. They're small. like You can't see them because they're gas form, but they're extremely shiny. So what can happen is if there's enough of those in the, in the atmosphere, if we have enough sulfuric acid in our atmosphere mixed in with water vapor, well, it kind of acts like a mirror. And the sunlight and the heat from the sun will actually be bounced back into our uh, into space. And we will not be getting that radiation, that, not, that warmth, the light from the sun that we need to survive. And the temperatures on Earth, because of that, will start to drop. And if they drop far enough, we could actually be plunged into an ice age. All right. So I know kind of a kind of a weird kind of a weird thing to happen for volcanic eruptions. And if enough volcanoes erupted, we would have major, major breathing problems around the world because that uh, that ash can travel around the world very quickly. The global temperature will drop a number of degrees. And if enough go, it could actually be an ice age. So good question, Colin. I really like that one. Well done, sir. Now, uh, if you go to a different universe and you will find yourself again, if you come back, I don't, I don't know about that. All right, you guys, uh, bones and calcium. I'll work on uh, that for tomorrow, something about um, how do bones work and muscles and bones, all right, and how everything moves around like that. That's really good. Heat from the core of the earth. Uh, yeah, that's. you guys are now answering each other's questions. Brilliant, brilliant. Answering each, each other's questions. That makes me really, really happy, all right? We got a number of people in here again. This is This is amazing. I love... That people are tuning in and asking questions. All right. Anybody do anything fun today? It's nice outside. I kind of feel bad being in here. You guys should be outside doing something. You know, go outside, go for a walk, you know, enjoy the sunshine for a little bit. What would happen if the sun exploded? Interesting, Nalani. I like that question too. Well, we know though that the sun's not going to explode. All right. We know that the sun's going to expand. I talked about this a little bit the other day. The sun's going to expand into a red giant, and when it does, it's going to devour Mercury, and it's going to devour Venus. May eventually uh, get to Earth. All right. If not, it'll stop before Earth. But the the, uh, the Earth is the temperature is going to go way up. All the water is going to evaporate on the Earth's surface, and we're going to be left with just a steaming hot rock with zero life on it. Okay. Good. Oh, somebody played basketball. Tosh played some basketball. You know, I'm going to go out and do that a little bit too. Uh, I'm going to go out and shoot some hoops. You got yelled at today. Oh, that's not good. Oh, got yelled at today. Going to walk, Alana. Enjoy that. Hope you had a good birthday yesterday, Alana. That's awesome. All right. What organisms can survive? I just saw something about organisms survive. What organisms survive the coldest temperatures? That's an excellent question, too. Uh, who's that? Uh, Bakakan biscuits. I don't know who that is. But I believe the creatures that can survive in the world's most harshest climates are called ptarmigans. I believe is what they're called. I'm going to look that up for you for tomorrow. A ptarmigan. They're found in like the craziest places on earth. All right. I know today was kind of short. That's okay. I'm going to have be signing off here in just a minute. I want you guys to keep asking questions. Oh, before I go. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. totally forgot about that. I added in Schoology, I put a folder on for today's writing, for, for today's stream, March 26, 2020. I added two things to it. Again, you know, this is all optional stuff. You don't have to be doing it. I added a creative writing prompt, number three. Some of you have done both of them already. If you've not and you want to and get some extra credit points, go back into the folders and check them out. Here's today's. 
because I went to the moon today and was traveling around and we're talking about all these universes and galaxies and things like that. Today's is about time travel. So your prompt is time travel and your words to use in your story, hurricane, email, laundry, pastry, as in like those yummy things you get at a bakery, garlic, staff, germs, share, and machine. See if you can come up with a story about time travel that involves those words right there. So that's one thing I put in the folder. And then another thing I put in the folder is just a submission for pictures and videos of science stuff. If you've been doing any of the uh, things that I've put on Schoology, the Tornado Proof Structure Project, the Egg Drop Project, and you've taken pictures or videos, go ahead and submit those right through here. Go ahead and submit them through here so I can take a look at them. I'm interested to see what you guys have been doing. And also, if you've done other things about science that are not related to things that I've talked about or you've researched your own stuff, throw it up there too. Give me some pictures and videos of things that you've done that are cool because the more we share, the more ideas we get, and the more we can keep doing this. All right? So, it's awesome. I love that you guys are here and that you keep coming back. All right? Keep it up. How long would it take to drown because your body will use its backup air, which is all the free battery that can last so long underwater? Man, immune system could attack your nerves. Now, how much percent of the egg would be cracked if you put it in a small box with foam inside? Well, Bryce, go ahead and do it, man. Come up with your, your, your contraption there. Take some pictures. Use the little sheet I put in the, uh, in the folder for that day and, and see what you can get. See what you can get. See what you can find out. All right. Um, awesome. All right, guys. Oh, the Yellowstone volcano. Awesome. I'm not going to talk about that on here. I'm going to wait till we get back to school because I'm going to we're going to do a whole thing on the Yellowstone volcano. But I'm so glad you know about that already because that's a really important thing to know about. All right. All right, guys. Take it easy. Uh, you know, go outside, have some fun, uh, and, and stay safe. And stay safe. Remember, we're all in this together. Keep your questions coming. See you tomorrow.